Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I greet you in the wonderful and awesome name of Jesus to my pastor, Pastor Barlow, who is celebrating uh, 33 years of pastoring, amen, and 40-something years of preaching, amen. Let's bless God for him, amen. Amen. We're grateful for his leadership and his vision that he has labored here in love at Second Baptist, and our lives have become the richer and the better for it. Amen. We thank God for his lovely wife who has stood by his side all of these years of ministry. I know every day hadn't been sunshine, but God has kept both of them. Amen. And we thank God for that to the preachers, uh, deacons, and trustees, and deaconess of our church. We recognize you on today, as well, on today as well. There's a word from the Lord that we want to look at. It comes out of one of the Gospels. Actually, it's found in all three Gospels, but we want to look at Luke's account, uh, Luke chapter 9, verses 37 through 43. Luke chapter 9 verses 47 through 43. Amen. If you would stand for the reading of God's word on today, if you're physically able. If you have it, why don't you say amen? If you don't, why don't you say hold up? Amen. Luke chapter 9, verse 37 through 43. Luke writes, Now it happened on the next day when they had come down from the mountain that a great multitude met him. Suddenly a man uh, from the multitude cried out saying, Teacher, I implore you, look on my Son, for he is my only son, my only child. And behold, a spirit seizes him, and he suddenly cries out in convulsions, begin to come upon him, so he foams at the mouth, and it departs from him with great difficulty bruising him so i implore your disciples to cast it out but they could not then jesus answered and said "O faithless and perverse generation how long will i be with you bring your son here and as he was still coming the demon threw him down and convulsions began to come upon him then Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the child, and gave back to his father. And they were all amazed at the majesty of God. But while everyone marveled at the things which Jesus did, he said to his disciples, Let these with who are ceased of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. So John taught his disciples to pray that's in chapter 11 but we actually want to stop at verse 43 and they all were amazed at the majesty of God you may be seated I want to talk about he's still able he's still able Church, I said he's still able. Amen. 
action spy film entitled Mission Impossible is an action thriller storyline about a U.S. government operative by the name of Ethan Hunt while on a secret covert mission that takes a disastrous turn Ethan becomes the prime suspect of his colleague's murder. The persistent storyline continues as Agent Hunt now is a fugitive, recruits several brilliant individuals to help him retrieve a confidential computer file that will seek to prove his innocence. A mission where everyone was equipped and prepared has now taken a turn for the worse. Don't go to sleep in church. You miss your blessing. The innocent now becomes guilty. And what was seemingly a mission that was possible now has become impossible. Have you ever been there before? Where you've done all that you knew to do. You've dotted all your I's and crossed all your T's. You did your homework. You prepared. You planned for the contingencies. And it still was not enough. Have you ever been there before? Come on, come on, talk back to me. You did your due diligence. You did your homework. You did all that you could possibly do. And it still was not enough. How do you handle life? When you do all that you know to do. And you do all that God has asked you to do. And it's still not enough. Preach, Goose. Come on, I need my real folk to talk to me. Y'all holy folk, y'all can stay quiet, but I want to find my real folk in here because not every day has been sunshine. There have been some stuff that has transpired in your life that you didn't prepare for, but it still happened. You did the best you could, but yet God still allowed some stuff to come into your life. And what was possible, now, mama, has become impossible. And such is the case that we are presented with in Luke chapter 9, verses 37 through 43a. Jesus has entered into his ending of his Galilean ministry. And he has intentionally made two previous tours accompanying only his disciples. It's important to understand that Luke's account of the healing possessed unclean spirit is half the link of the parallel account found in Mark 9 and in Matthew 17. This dramatic dialogue between the boy's father and his existential struggle for faith in Mark's account are absent by Luke in favor of an abridged account focusing on the relationship and his relationship with Jesus. Luke, in the earlier part of chapter 9, indicates that he's called the boys together before sending them out. While Matthew and Mark report the mission of the 12, Luke is careful to include that after he brought them together, 
He first gave them power. Before he gave them power, he first brought them together. And that's God's word for us on today. That before God can give you anything, we got to learn how to come together. Because the truth of the matter is that there's power in unity. And God is not interested in empowering one person and a divided people still stand. Before he gives power, he called the boys together. And I want to remind us today that if we're going to be the church that God has called us to be, we got to learn how to come together. There are no big eyes and little U's in God's church. We all have been saved by grace. We got to learn how to work together. He calls the boys together and he then gives them power. All three have been empowered and given authority to cast out demons and the ability to cure diseases. Luke says that the very next day after Jesus was transfigured on a certain mountain, before his Coming down, Peter and James and John immediately are confronted by the multitude at the foot of the mountain. Somewhere between coming down and being confronted by the crowd, Luke says a certain man anxiously, anxious, anxiously, church, but desperately approaches Jesus and tells him about his only son's condition. Mark's account of the narrative that describes that he began to question Jesus, seeking Jesus for help. That's the story. That's it. <laughs> really, we can all go home after that. But there are some things I want to share with you that I believe will, that will bless your life and we can all go home together. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this text simply tells us this. If we can just summarize this Healing narrative, this is what the text is saying. Y'all stay in your seat. Don't get up just yet. That with God, all things are possible. That's the summarization of the text. That with God, all things are still possible. This man who had a son who was demon-possessed, knew that God was still able to do something about his son's condition. And I don't know who I'm talking to today, but you might be in your midst of the situation. You don't know what to do. You don't know who to trust. But I want to stop by to remind you that God is still able. This text reminds us that man's extremities are still God's opportunities. That every opportunity that you have been given in life is an opportunity for God to show himself that much faithful and worthy to be praised. You see, we have to understand that when things come into our lives, they come as opportunities for God to show his power and provision. There are three points I want to share with you. And we again, we can go home together. The first one is about Jesus' rebuke. Jesus rebukes the disciples and the generation because of their unbelief. Sleep on that slide. Let me try over here. Jesus rebukes his disciples and the crowd because of their unbelief. That's how I sleep too. Let me try over here. Jesus rebukes the disciples, Steve, and the crowd who did not believe. This text tells us that we have to learn to align ourselves, Lord have mercy, with people who believe the same thing that we believe. And people
people who don't believe the same thing we believe, we got to learn to give them the deuces. We got to learn to give people the I buy because every now and then God wants to work into our lives, but we're surrounding ourselves with people who don't trust God for the same thing we trust in God for. He rebukes the disciples because of their unbelief. The problem and the situation you might be dealing with is because of this. It might be this. Check this out. God might want to step in and fix it, but you keep surrounding yourself with people who don't believe. You're asking people to pray for you, Lord have mercy, who don't believe that God is able to do something about your situation. And God's word for us today is we have to learn to rebuke those people who don't trust God for the things we're trusting God for. Jesus rebuke, he rebukes his disciples and the crowd. There's a word about the boy's restoration. Bible says Jesus heals the boy. This healing is a unique healing, Steve, because he just didn't heal the boy, but the text suggests, or the Greek suggests, that when he healed him, there was something still broken. Which says to us that when God does something for us, He's always in the business of doing more than what we ask. Okay, let me try it over here. You asked God for a job, but God not only gave you a job, he gave you the salary that you needed and that you even didn't deserve. You asked God for a spouse, and not only did God give you a spouse, he gave you somebody who's going to put up with your mess. Y'all still don't get it. God gave you so much, but he oftentimes not only gives us what we ask for, he gives us more than enough. And is there anybody in here that can give God praise for always giving us more than enough? Touch somebody and say he's more than enough kind of God. He always gives me more than what I ask for. What I love about this text is that at the man's request, he didn't tell Jesus how to fix the situation. He just told him to look upon him. He just told Jesus just to look upon his son. And sometimes, brothers and sisters, we have to learn we can't tell God how to do what God needs to be doing. We can't tell God what to do and how to do it when we come with our situation. We got to learn to trust God that he knows what he's doing. He tells him to look upon his son. I like that because... The man understands that wherever God's eyes is, that's where he is. And it's a reminder to us that wherever you find yourself in life, if you find yourself alone and isolated, sometimes God, all he has to do is look upon your situation. What is it about when God chooses to look on our situation? When God looks on our situation, church, he simply is telling us, that he still hasn't forgot about us. There's a mad word about the man, Jesus' rebuke. There's a word about the boy's restoration. There's a word about the father's redemption. 
Jesus heals the boy. And after he heals the boy, he brings the boy back to his father. Jesus was not just concerned with healing the boy because Jesus understood that the boy being healed and not having a relationship with his father makes the healing null and void. In other words, stay with me, Jesus is saying that blessings ought to be shared with each other. Whatever God does for you, he has me on his mind as well. That's why sometimes people have a hard time being blessed because God only blessed those who he can be a blessing to. If you find yourself uh, coveting your blessing and not sharing your blessing God sometimes has a way of cutting off those blessings because you choose not to share it with your sisters and brothers this text y'all is interesting because it shows us that life cannot always be lived on the mountaintop Jesus was transfigured and as soon as he came down he was confronted with the issue and sometimes brothers and sisters stay with me we get so complacent and spoiled when things are going the way we want them to and God's word for us life is not always filled with sunshine and roses and we gotta learn to know how to adjust Jesus comes down off the mountain. He's confronted with the issue. Jesus deals with the issue. And the boy is restored to his father. The good news of this text is that wherever you find yourself in life, God is still able to fix it. And wherever you may be, mentally or spiritually, God is still able to restore you. And this word for us on today is that if we want to find ourselves being all that God wants us to be, we have to learn to rebuke some folk. We got to learn how to tell some people that they're not welcome in our inner circle. Is there anybody here that can give God praise? Because you know that God is still able. Can I get a witness? And the Bible says that when Jesus came down from the mountain, the Bible says that he was willing to heal the boy. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise? Because there was some stuff that God did for you that you couldn't do for yourself. Microphone check one, two. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise because he's still in the business of doing the impossible? There was some stuff in your life that didn't go the way you wanted to go, but God stepped in and he fixed the situation. I'm out of here, y'all. I appreciate you. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. But I get excited when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. There was some stuff I didn't know how I was going to make it. But God stepped in right on time. He's an old time God. Yes, he is. He may not come when you want him to, but he's always, always on time. Can you give God praise? Can you say yeah? There was some stuff that you didn't deserve that God still did it. The password is, do you believe? Do you believe that he 
he's still able. Do you believe that he moves mountains? Do you believe he can still heal you? Do you believe he can save you? I know a man. His name was Jesus. He died on the cross. They buried him in a tomb. But all of a Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands. Can you say yeah? Can you say yeah? Can you give God praise? Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yeah. You might be in the season where you encounter some impossible stuff. And God wants to tell you on today. Yeah, it's impossible for you, but it's possible for me. Listen, we don't have to come in here and fake it. Life is real. Some of us are struggling just to make ends meet. We go to work, pay, try to pay our bills on time. We try to do all, we try to treat folk right and some things still don't never seem to line up and connect. And God is telling you all today is that he's still able. It's still possible. Sometimes life has an unusual way of taking a turn for the worse, but we got to learn to trust God. Amen.